Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. Trying something a little bit different this week, this time the game isn't free-to-play all the time, but it's free-to-play this weekend on Steam. These Steam free-to-play weekends are a great thing that you should definitely be taking advantage of, because it gives you a chance to play everything from large-scale AAA titles to small budget releases like this game, Nexus. That's right, I said Nexus. I didn't make the super funny joke, Hey, how do you say this game's name anyway? Is it Nezrius? Nexus? I don't know. Because they say the name of the game in the intro, okay? It's not funny, it wasn't funny the first time someone said it, and it's not funny the 50 millionth time when you're saying it. The name of the game is Nexus. Just say Nexus. Now that we're clear on the pronunciation of the game's name, let's talk about what it is. Hopefully the footage you're seeing on your screen is doing a pretty decent job of visually explaining to you what this game is, but if I was forced to describe it with the words that come out of my mouth hole, I would probably say it's a fast-paced, skill-based, first-person, deathmatch shooter. Hopefully that jumble of terminology might bring to mind images of games like Quake 3, or its modern counterpart Quake Live, or Unreal Tournament, or really any of those fast-paced shooters from the mid to late 90s. Around that time when 3D technology was really emerging, you had the voodoo acceleration going on. Yeah, I had a voodoo card. I had a, I had a, a voodoo generation one card in my Packard Bell computer. Yes, I was, I was that badass. But whoa, I better stop this little nostalgia trip before it even gets started, because if I start talking about how cool I was in high school, we are going to be here all day long. But, uh, but seriously, my original point was just that uh, if you did play these sorts of games when you were a young man, an impressionable youth like myself, then you will probably pop an immediate nostalgia boner when you fire this game up and play it for the first time. Now, that doesn't really mean that those of you out there who didn't grow up playing games like this can't enjoy it. It's just going to be a different experience for you. If you were weaned on the modern military shooter, then this is going to be a very foreign game to you. But... That doesn't mean that you can't find enjoyment in it. Now, this isn't a free-to-play game. Like I said, it is free for this weekend only, but it's currently on sale for $2.50, so I thought the game was worth looking at, right? And it also has a really interesting play style and a really interesting history. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole history of this game, the backstory, the controversial backstory of this game, but I'll give you a real quick recap. In 2001, Lee Vermillion starts development on a Quake Deathmatch mod called Nexus. Eventually in 2005, version 1.0 of the standalone game Nexus is released. It uses the Dark Places engine, a heavily modified version of the original Quake engine, and it is released under the GNU General Public License. A community quickly solidifies around this refreshing free deathmatch shooter, and that community continues to contribute to the open source game, adding maps and ideas for several years. Eventually in 2010, Lee decides to sell the game. He sells the rights to the name and the code to Ilphonic. As you might imagine, this didn't sit too well with some members of the community who were devoting their time and talents to a free open source project, and they branched off to create the game Zenotic, which you can pick up on Desura, and you might even find me playing it from time to time. Fast forward to 2012, where THQ publishes Ilphonic's CryEngine 3 powered version of Nexus. So a fairly interesting history for what turns out to be a somewhat interesting game. Make no mistake about it, this game is a one-trick pony, and they don't try to hide that. They do one thing really well, and that is fast-paced deathmatch action. Four-on-four, four, small arena, shoot things, kill things, crazy guns, power-ups, boom. I mean, this is what they do, and they do it really well. But when I start to think about this game, it sits in a really weird place. Because if this is the sort of thing that you like... You already have another game you're probably devoted to. You're probably already playing Quake Live. You're probably already playing Xenotic, maybe even. You're playing other games that already do what this game does. Now, it's a really pretty game. They use the CryEngine 3 really well. I mean, it looks great. But again, if you're the sort of person that wants this sort of game, you're going to bump the settings all the way down to the lowest settings because you want the highest possible FPS. You're maybe even going to go in and edit the I&I &I files to try to get even more out of the game. So again, kind of an odd place that this game's sitting. You know, people who would play this game seriously and take advantage of some of the competitive trimmings that they've added to the game won't care about all of the beautiful graphics. 
Uh, that is why a game like Xenotic or the original Nexus is using the Quake 1 engine in 2005 or 2009 or 2012 because that engine is known. It's a known commodity. It runs really well on modern spec systems and that's what you want with a game like this. So some of the pretty flares and bloom and all that stuff, it's kind of wasted on the people who are really the target audience for this game. So it's really, really strange. Uh, the one interesting mechanic that they do bring are the mutators. The mutators uh, are things that can significantly change the game, and I mean really significantly change the game. Uh, there are mutators that do things like make your opponents colorblind in matches that have team damage. So you're running around shooting at anybody you see, and you're killing your own teammates left and right. You might even see a clip of that uh, within this gameplay that I have here. Uh, you can make the whole level super slippery, you can lower gravity, you, you can do all sorts of stupid crazy things, you can go invisible. Uh, there are just some insane things you can do with the mutators, again, to the point where I wouldn't see pro tournaments use the mutators because they're so game-changing and so game-breaking. Uh, so again, another odd feature. If this game is, is aimed at a pro scene, so many of the things they do are contrary. So many of their special things, their their uh, notable features, just won't matter to the pros. Uh, so mutators are super interesting for casual games. They really do make things uh, really, really interesting. I, I had one earlier uh, somewhere in this gameplay where my gun just randomly changes. Just randomly changes. You know, you have you have uh, ones that will make you a sort of a, a radiate health. You will heal people around you. Like it's it's really cool, interesting stuff. Uh, but again, the target audience for this sort of game wouldn't really want that sort of game-changing, massive, you know, crippling effect to happen. They just want super consistency. And uh, this game doesn't have that sort of consistency. Now, it has consistency in that it's batshit crazy, and it continually reinforces the fact that it's batshit crazy. Uh, but... Yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum, this game. It, it's a, not a quantum conundrum, just a, just a regular conundrum. Uh, but it, yeah, it's it's definitely worth your time. I mean, download it, play it on the free-to-play weekend. It's less than two gigs, so it's not that bad of a download. Uh, it is fun. It's four-on-four, four, so you get matches pretty quickly. And uh, I, I have to say, for $250, I don't regret my purchase. I've owned this game from a previous sale. I did buy it for $250 back then as well. Absolutely don't regret my purchase. I don't know that I would buy this game for the full price of 10 bucks, but for 250 it's a good distraction. Play it every now and then, have a little bit of fun. Jump on during the free-to-play weekend, take advantage of the full servers, and get yourself some games in. And if you feel so compelled, drop 250 on this game. I mean, I think it is uh, definitely worth a look, if nothing else. So this is the part of the video where I would start spewing my uninformed opinions and other inane gibberish into your ear holes, but we're going to forego that for this week. The real purpose of this video was to get Nexus out there in front of your eyes, and that goal has been accomplished. Next week on Free to Play Friday, we will get back to actually covering games that are free all the time and not just for a special weekend, but I need your help. If you have any suggestions for games you might like to see me play and profile here on Free to Play Friday, please leave those in the comments below. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.